one of the last places you would probably look for fresh water on Earth is beneath the ocean, which is full of salt. So that is sort of a mystery in itself. We're currently about uh, 25 to 30 miles off the coastline. Uh, we have about 160 feet of water beneath us. And then we're drilling down another 300 feet and we're starting to see water that doesn't look like an ocean. It has much less salt in the ocean, almost to the definition of, of, of fresh water. Um, so one part per thousand salt. One of the ideas is 20,000 years ago, there was a large ice sheet above us, and that ice sheet was melting at the bottom and it pushed that fresh water down beneath the continental shelf. Then sea level rose when those glaciers melted and trapped all that fresh water. Uh, that's a hypothesis that we're gonna be able to test with some of our techniques. Another hypothesis is in the geological past, sea levels have been lower, 300 feet lower. Instead of having 150 feet of water above, beneath us, this was a beach and we just had rainwater coming down and seeping into the ground, just like you would uh, in your backyard today. But now it's been flooded by the ocean. The two most surprising things that we've seen here are one, that the shallow, the freshened water is starting at a much shallower depth than we had originally anticipated and ending deeper than we had originally anticipated, indicating that there's probably more freshened water here than we thought two months ago before we started this expedition. Uh, another interesting thing that we've seen is everything that we're drilling through rocks that are tens of millions of years old are still loose sediments like beach sand and clay that you would buy at a modeling store. And so why haven't these turned into rocks? This might be part of the fluid flow st story that explains this fresh and water system. So uh, our estimates before we came out on this expedition, based on very limited data, was there might be as much water uh, to supply all of New York City with drinking water and fresh water needs for up to 800 years. The sediments that we're recovering and the volumes of fresh water that we're estimating will be able to put it, allow us to put that in a better, more realistic context. It's not to say that New York City would use it, but that's just a frame of reference. The water we believe extends from all the way up to Maine down to New Jersey. So we need to extrapolate from the three sites that we're drilling here, south of Nantucket, Martha's Vineyard, all the way from New York City up to Maine to get a better estimate. We're still in HPC, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> This is the, the core handler here, so that's where the, the drill pipe is loaded on or taken off the string. We've got scientists who are um, looking at the age of the water, they're dating the water using various geochemical techniques. We've got microbiologists uh, who are looking at the, the life that, that you can find within the rocks and the sediments and the water themselves. Um, uh, we have uh, sedimentologists who are looking at the structures of the rocks and the, the actual makeup, the, the geology of the, the rocks and sediments uh, beneath the seabed uh, and see how they compare with stuff that we've got onshore.
what we're learning here in New England this summer, we can apply to other areas like South Africa, Indonesia, Japan, Australia, and even Antarctica to put these, uh, this understanding in a global context. This is a, a setup, a schematic setup of the work we did um, off New Jersey and Martha's Vineyard in, in 2015. And if the seafloor has a lot of fresh water in it, fresh water doesn't con conduct current as well as seawater does. We have to be really careful about trying to understand and think about exploiting these kinds of resources because we just don't understand enough about what the impacts of doing that would be to our main onshore supplies. If we were to start pumping, for instance, is it an isolated body? If it is, then once it's tapped and, and drained, then it's gone, right? If it's connected to the terrestrial supply, then pumping could you know, be pulling fresh water from beneath the islands offshore, which would then deplete the supply beneath the islands. So there's a lot of potential risks to, to exploiting that. That said, there are countries that are looking at doing this, um, particularly very water-starved countries.